So this month we are um, at our monthly bridge to divide monthly meeting. Um, you may notice just a slight um, color change in the presentation. That's because um, grow and grow action have essentially merged into one um, public facing organization. Um, I'd say this is more important internally than externally, but I think the main thing to uh, let you know is that we used to have two websites, a grow website and a grow action website. Uh, now you'll just have one website to go to. So um, if you have any questions about that, let us know. But essentially, um, we are now one 501c4 organization um, publicly, and all our projects are housed under that organization. So yeah. And then I saw Elise joined us. Um, thank you for joining us, Elise. Sorry about any Zoom difficulties if those um, bared their head a little bit. Thank you for joining us, Elise. I think Wendy's joining too. So yeah, and then Linda, do you wanna take us to our next slide? So here's a few things on the agenda tonight. Um, we'll just give a little bit of an update on our work in May and what we've been up to over the last month, as well as some of our plans coming up. And we'll spend some time talking about our postcard um, campaign that we're going to be starting to contact our legislators. So yeah, that's sort of what we got on the agenda for tonight. And we should be done by eight o'clock. All right, you wanna take me to our strategic goal? So uh, this strategic goal has been uh, the subject of the last couple monthly meetings. Um, as we've been looking at the outlook on final five voting over the last few months, it's become clear that it's becoming more of a long-term goal than a short-term goal to pass it. So um, since there's probably a couple of years or so um, before we can see final five voting being passed in Wisconsin, we decided to uh, create a short-term goal for ourselves too, in order to give ourselves a finish line to pass sooner than um, the you know, straight passage of final five voting. Um, so because of that, we have decided on the goal of bringing final five voting as a voting mechanism um, to at least 10 community organizations by December 31st of this year. Um, so that could mean we could go to something like a Rotary or a Chamber of Commerce um, and introduce final five voting either as a way to um, hold their elections or just as a decision-making um, mechanism. I know Anne Leak right now has her Unitarian Society um, voting on different colors for their new building, um, for their new building siding and um, they're using final five voting or, or final seven voting technically since they have seven options um, for that. So that's sort of the idea is to uh, push this forward um, as best as we can in the short term while also keeping an eye on our long-term goal of passing final five voting. So yeah, any um, questions or comments come to mind regarding that? Mm. I'm wondering, do you have, can you give us an update how many of the 10 have you gotten so far? Uh, well, we just finalized this last week. So right now, um, zero, but um, you could argue that Anne's Unitarian Society maybe counts, but um, we just decided on this goal last <laughs> week. So I would say zero right now. Okay, but you did present to AAUW in River Falls. I mean, what, yeah. what, is, what, constitu what constitutes uh organizing a, a community organization yeah so um specifically this would mean introducing it as a voting mechanism so if we went to aauw and got them to start using final five voting um either for their leadership elections or um their decision making so um, not all organizations um necessarily would want that, but might want us to present to them still. Um, but if we were to, I guess, change how AEW is voting on things, um, then that would be one of those 10. Well, I hate to be the downsider of this whole thing, but 
any organization I've ever belonged to would be lucky to have five candidates running for any position uh, in it. So, uh, I mean, there's got to be a secondary choice. Um, it, it would occur to me, since I'm pretty close to AUW public policy members, that, you know, I can go statewide with that and suggest it to the other group. But but basically, there's got to be another way for us to express this. And that may just means presenting it to them. I see this as political and not organizational. And I, maybe I'm not understanding the concept of this very well. Well, yeah, no, you're absolutely, your concerns are something that we um, very much um, brought up to ourselves in conversations and in the last couple monthly meetings as well, um, that absolutely like a lot of organizations um, can barely even find one person to run for a leadership position. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's absolutely been something we've thought about as well. And that's partly why we decided on um, allowing it for decision-making as opposed to just leadership elections. So for example, if um, AAUW or another organization, we've had a couple organizations come up where they have um, an annual choice of five or so different um, charities to donate money to. Um, and that would be an example of sort of a final five election that they could run um, that isn't leadership focused, but is focused on making a decision for the organization. Um, but yeah, like your thoughts about that are absolutely things that we shared and are discussing. I see Alexi, do you have a comment or question? A um, little, little bit of both. Um, I, I had the same immediate reaction that Barb did. Um, and you know as as you said like i've been involved with for me personally a lot of union organizations and the struggle is usually to get a candidate for every role mm -hmm. um and if you have a very healthy union with with you know robust internal discussion you might get two um i do see some value to normalizing final five voting in settings where it's not actually different from from first past the post voting it takes away one of the the reluctances people have where you can say you know for for right now this is this is going to change literally nothing mm -hmm. um i'm not convinced that makes it easier to get people to do it um but my the the question that i'm getting to is is how does getting final five voting in use in um like civic organizations actually help us towards getting it eventually used in state or or even local elections i'm mm -hmm. not seeing that connection yet Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Wendy, were you about to say something? Yeah, it, it's a, it normalizes it, it from a cultural perspective, particularly if it's used not just for electing people, but also for decision making purposes, like the Unitarian Universalist Church choosing what, you know, choosing a color. Um, by making it familiar to people, then it makes it easier for them to imagine using it in other settings, such as in elections, mm -hmm. um, because they see the practical advantage of it. So I, I think it was really smart to, to have it be broader than just electing people to leadership positions, but to use it for decision-making purposes. Um, I think that could actually help streamline a lot of organizations being able to get things done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess like during our um, conversations on deciding a strategic goal, like it became pretty clear pretty early that we didn't have a perfect goal since um, we know final five voting is years off. Um, like it, we can say, 
pretty reasonably that it probably won't be passed this year. Um, so at that point, we we're sort of at a crossroads of do we make a goal now that we can point to and work towards um, in the near term while still working towards that long term goal. Um, and that's sort of what we settled on. And we had a few different options. Um, and every goal we had that came to us was somewhat flawed. Um, and I think like, you know, and I don't know if you share the same opinion, Linda, or, you know, they've both been in our um, strategy discussions with our leadership team. Um, but yeah, like it was, it's important to say too, we're still pushing final five voting through our um, regular methods of house parties and um, community events, but um, just with a short-term goal as well um, to sort of give us some immediate sense of direction. Yeah, uh, Nancy. Well, I I think um, that's realistic. And frankly, I, I feel like it's, um, it's hard for people to make that mental leap from either or sort of, so to speak, to having right choice. So doing the education piece first is essential or it's, it's doesn't have a ghost of a chance at the assembly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, like the main thing is that, like I said, we're pushing both the long-term and short-term goal um, and plan on just going, you know, as hard as we were going before, just with that finish line in sight for those um, 10 community organizations that we hope to get by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for um, all your questions on that since it is like the more we like think about what we can do in the near term, like the, the easier it um, gets to think about our chances in the long term and how we can do something that maybe helps our chances slightly in the long term. Uh, but we also certainly, yeah, like recognize and understand that this isn't quite the, a perfect goal either. Um, so, yeah. And then I, uh, I just I'm sorry, Ben, I just I just yep. feel like there's one other thing I need to add, um, mm -hmm. because besides being a public policy person for AAUW locally, I'm on the state public policy committee. I'm co-chair with that. And what I would tell you is I don't I while we as Americans often want immediate gratification, I don't think we need to set up an intermediate goal Um even at the state level, we're lucky to have two people running for the presidency of the of the organization. Let's just get back to talking about this in a political context and understanding that it's going to take a while, just as um, gerrymandering, trying to fix gerrymandering is taking a while, or contributions to political campaigns is still a mess. I mean, all of those things take a while to change. And that immediate gratification just isn't going to happen in this. I think placing an intermediate goal in it just simply means that if you fail at it, you're dead. If you fail at getting organizations to wrap their arms around it, and I got to tell you, if I took it to AUW, I'd have trouble having them wrap their arms around it. What we need to is say in public policy, this is what we're for and, and, and move on to the political aspect of this. Sorry, that's just my opinion, and I respect that other people may feel differently about it, but I just don't understand the intermediacy of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it partly comes from, um, in an organizing perspective, um, an intermediate goal or a short-term goal is important to have, um, similar to how, like, right now there's not organizing going on around gerrymandering because there's no six to 12 month goal. Um, now there's possibly lawsuits um, that will be explored now that Janet's been elected, but um, yeah, like I definitely get your um, concern. And over the last few months, we've had the, the same sort of um, conversations. So um, that's something that we have um, had in our minds too, is those exact same sentiments. So, yeah. 
Um, so Linda, do you want to take us onto our geographic scope? So this is our main geographic scope. We've got four count uh, or four assembly districts, I should say, that we cover. Assembly districts 28, 29, 30, and 93, mm -hmm. um, which include counties of Pierce, St. Croix, Dunn, Polk, Eau Claire, and Pepin. And um, you know, we get out of those counties at times too. Um, but for the most part, that's where most of our efforts go towards is this four assembly district area. And then you want to bring us onto our house party team update. So usually Bob would be the one giving this update, but he is um, preoccupied tonight. So I'll give a short update on house parties for him. Um, so we always like to go over these benefits of final five voting to make sure that the benefits are sticking with people. Um, the exact mechanics of final five voting, we always say are important, but they're not as important as the benefits um, since your average person cares more so about how this would change their life um, as opposed to how the exact mechanics work. So um, some of those benefits are that final five voting can reduce toxic campaigns, gridlock, and the power of extremists. Um, it eliminates the spoiler effect and also makes politicians more accountable um, to voters by emphasizing the general election in November. Um, and it has a small effect on big money in politics. And I say small for a reason. Um, there would need to be much more um, done in that field in order to ameliorate the issue of money in politics. So um, those are some of our benefits. And then the next slide has our um, numbers of house parties that we had in May. We had four parties in the month of May. And can you go to the last slide, Linda? Previous slide. Yeah, previous slide. <clears throat> there you are. Um, so we had four parties in May, uh, about 87 guests at those parties. Um, we are looking for help placing us in front of rotaries and chambers whether it's just for an election uh, or for a presentation or an election, I meant. Um, and oftentimes the relationship will probably start with the presentation. Um, so yeah, any community organization we will go to and present to. Um, and yeah, so far we've had over 40 house parties. Um, and actually, I think we I think those numbers might be slightly out of date. I think we had our 47th house party earlier this week, um, and then about 600 or so attendees. Um, and then, you know, I have one brief story to share from a house party earlier this week. We often tell people that if they want to host, but they're not sure if they can, that they can always co-host with someone else. And earlier this week, I was at a house party in Altoona, um, and it turned out that the co-hosts had barely even known each other. Um, one of the co-hosts had been to a house party previously and um, wanted to host, but didn't know who to invite. And then she ran into a woman at the bookstore and they started talking about ranked choice voting after about 10 minutes or so um, for some reason. And then that progressed into final five voting. And then they made a commitment to each other to co-host a house party together. Um, so that's, an example of, um, I guess, how easy it can be to find a co-host, but certainly there was some luck involved there, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that was quite the surprise earlier this week. Um, and then Linda, do you wanna take us to the next slide? And uh, Anne will talk to us about community events coming up. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I appreciate the discussion and the questions about our goal of uh, uh, working with organizations, um, hoping to get um, them to uh, participate in final five elections of some sort. And I did, did the last week have the Unitarian Universalist Society in River Falls participate in a color choice final five election. Um, and Wendy, I appreciate your comment about sort of normalizing final five or ranked choice voting um, so that people understand how it can work in their lives in lots of ways. Um, and it's a part of education. That's, I think our, our big commitment right now is to educate people in the Western Wisconsin area about what this is because so many people have never heard of it before. 
So we are still going to continue um, with city events, um, trying to get out in front of people um, to present to them uh, Bridge the Divide and uh, Final Five voting. And we are looking for volunteers. <laughs> Um, and our first event coming up uh, is the Hudson Pride event, which is on June 17th, um, Saturday. And we're looking for hopefully trying to find people who could fill two hour time slots. But um, if you're interested, but you can't do two hours, but maybe you could do an hour, we'd still love to have you come and join us at a table where we have our literature and we have, we have voting. So we do invite people to vote and practice final five voting with a fun vote um, in the picture here, um, you can see Bob Lean and, and we have used Starburst uh, flavors, favorite Starburst flavors as a very successful mechanism to get uh, kids mostly to pay attention to our booth and then drag their parents over. And while the kids are voting on their favorite Starburst flavors, we can talk to parents. Um, it's, it's fun, it's fun to be out. We all know we love summer and we like to be outside in summer and this is a great thing to do. Um, to talk to people, encourage people to learn more about Final Five and just participate in a fun Final Five voting. So um, Hudson Pride event is one of our summer events that's coming up. And again, if you can volunteer. Danny, I think you've got a form to fill out at the end of the Zoom, is that correct? Okay. Um, and Linda, next slide. Um, oops, uh, well, okay, so, so, um, and if you would are thinking about volunteering, but you, you might say, well, I really don't know what I'd say to people. I, I, I don't have my final five elevator speech down. Um, we would offer, if you're interested, a short Zoom training on um, how you can explain to people what the benefits of final five voting are um, and how the elections, how ballots are tabulated, because that's confusing to people. Um, and how to handle people who might challenge, although I don't think in my experience uh, in the several times I've been out in these um, booths, I've, I've had any problems with people uh, challenging me, but um, that's, a, that's a piece of the training. So how to talk to people uh, who are both, both positive and maybe skeptical. Um, and so we do have a couple training dates set up um, coming up in time for the Hudson Pride Festival, if you're interested in training and joining us as a volunteer. Um, and Linda, if you can go to the next slide. Um, we're also going to be present at River Falls Days. Um, this is last year's booth. Again, there's our Starburst election um, and we do need volunteers for two hour slots, but if you can't do two hours, but you might be able to do one hour, please join us, it's fun. Um, and if you know anybody else who might be interested in joining us, um, encourage people to show up. Um, not the more the merrier, we need maybe four people behind a table at any particular time um, because our space is a little bit limited, but we'd love to have you join us. And again, we will uh, run some volunteer trainings perhaps on um, July 11th or 12th, or we can be flexible um, if you're interested in doing this, but you think you want a little bit more background before you jump behind a table. Um, and if uh, you also can recommend maybe another city festival um, during the summer, uh, we might do some county fairs. We're still thinking about that, um, but we do wanna put ourselves in front of people so that we can continue with the education component of Final Five. Let us know if you've got ideas. And that's it, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Does, does anything come to mind for people right now in terms of city festivals um, in your areas? I think county fairs are a great idea. I know the ADRC has their own building in Glenwood City for the St. Craig County Fair. Um, it's possible in at Pierce County that the schoolhouse, the one room schoolhouse could be a site. The, the one issue that with county fairs is because they're several days long. Yeah. Uh, and when you sign up to, to have a booth uh, or a table at the county fair, they want that, that table personed from nine o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night for three or four, five, oh. 
days. Mm -hmm. So it's doable, but that's a lot of person power then. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so yeah. we, we, we will take that on, but we do need then volunteers that can help us. Um, uh, I, I can't talk for more than two hours uh, at a table. My voice gives out <laughs> after about two hours talking to people. So we do need a lot of people who can help us um, spread the message and spread the, the time commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was also going to suggest a, a art on the Kinney, but that is not a political or yeah, they won't, uh, they won't think. Understand. Well, right. But I'm thinking if you had a table someplace in a traffic area by the food like, area or well, i don't even think they would accept you there i bet you that's um but i was thinking maybe nancy like across the street on the city hall side or up by mm. the park veterans park um somewhere in there as people come and go um or even along the alley might be a place the other one is um bacon bash is sometime this fall i don't know the dates of it Bacon Bash is a younger crowd, not always, but um, is there another one in River Falls? I don't know. I guess the chamber might have on their website might have some of those things. But Barbara, we also want to we want to spread out. So um, are there other Hudson events? Are there new Richmond events? Mm -hmm. Are there Baldwin events? Are there Amory events? Are there Barron events? Are there St. Croix Falls events? Are there Buffalo events? Uh, Menominee. So we want to we, we want to try and reach other communities as well. We hope. Don't they have a country fest down by Eau Claire sometime in the fall? Um, I think country fest is just in a couple weeks, actually. Or is there another country fest? Isn't there one in Kadat? Yeah, I think there's two. Okay. Eau Claire is pretty big, though. Is yeah. what I'm thinking. About. Yeah. That could be in June, yeah. Yeah, that's worth looking into. Uh, Grace? Um, I, unfortunately, I don't know a lot of other events going on because I'm really part of the River Falls Hudson area, but I would say I did this last year in River Falls and uh, it really was a lot of fun. People were very interested while their kids were chewing on Starbursts and thinking about things. <laughs> it was a great opportunity for us to talk to the parents and people were receptive and the majority of people did not make it political actually um they they were really open to learning about it without challenging um and yeah so it was a positive experience and if you like to interact with people i think you'll enjoy it yeah absolutely thank you for sharing um danny yeah linda i know there's a lot of parades but i don't know if they also have um areas where they just have booths or things like that because i feel like just like how river falls has the booths at river falls days i wonder if other towns do too like roberts baldwin yeah i think some do some don't i think it, it might be a case-by-case -case sort of thing um but i think it's definitely worth looking into those other towns and seeing what like things they have on their Chamber of Commerce websites for us. Um, since, yeah, I'm sure there are some city events we can get to that we don't know of yet. Yeah. Hey, Ben, um, Larry has a list of car shows for the summer. And okay. often at car shows, they ask people to fill out a ballot and name their favorite car. But you've got whatever number of cars are there. You could ask if we could work with some of these car shows and ask them to do the top five or whatever number you want to use. Maybe that would be an example of how final five voting works. That's yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, if because you're right, they have you know hundreds of cars there, and um, a well, first past the post election doesn't work very well for that. Yeah. Well, somewhere, Larry's outside, but somewhere we have a list of the car shows and the people who are organizing. I think it's on the list as who's organizing them, where they are anyway. Okay. Just a that's thought. A good idea. Yeah. Good idea. I might follow up with you on that list since that's a yeah. great idea. Okay. 
Um, and then, Linda, do you want to bring us to our next slide? So early last month, um, May 8th or so, we went to Mauston and met with a few of our partners statewide in organizations like Voters First, Veterans for Political Innovation, um, John Punder from Take Back Our Republic um, to talk about Final Five voting and um, just network with those other organizations. Um, and yeah, we I, it was so Linda, Bob and I went there physically and then Anne, um, you joined virtually. Um, yeah, and it was a great experience. One of the things there that um, we were told to push more was postcards, which we'll get into in just a minute. Um, but I'm wondering, Linda or Anne, do you have any takeaways you wanna share from that event? I'll say for me, it was just nice to nice to be there and converse with the people across the state. Um, yeah. And were you gonna say, oh, Linda, yeah. I thought it was well done. Yeah, I was glad I got to go. Um, I think there were different opportunities to have the different groups speak and kind of find out what they were all doing. Um, we had a chance to just talk about like the same type of issue and how we would try to solve it. Um, I thought it was really good. Yeah, very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And then Elise, I'm writing down your suggestion for Buffalo City's farmers market since I think that's a great idea too for us to just set up for a few hours there. Thank you for sharing that, Elise. A farmer's market, that is a really good idea because River Falls and Hudson both have farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, River Falls doesn't let anything political in their farmer's oh, markets. Okay. That's not okay. true no. of every city. Not true. Uh, different cities have different policies. Yeah, right. Okay. Good to know. Elise, do you know off the top of your head if you've seen any political organizations there? Uh, last night was the first night of the event. Um, and I don't recall, I really, no, I I don't know the political would be. There was like the turtles for Merrick Park. So there are um, community groups involved. I don't know that Buffalo City has a strong enough um, political wherewithal to find a to find a group that would actually put a booth up honestly yeah yeah well it's worth us getting a hold of them at least and seeing um if they do allow uh booths like ours but yeah thank you are we about to say something i'm sorry did you say me <laughs> oh yeah i thought you I thought i saw you saying something um What's the name of the brewery, you guys, that's right behind the River Falls Police Department out in the, um, Fresh you know, River. in the Rush, Rush River. River? Thank you. Okay, I couldn't think of it. Uh, I think they had, we were out there last Friday um, because we wanted to watch Chris Silver, and there were a couple of booths set up out there. Now, Rush River's had a couple of political events out there. Do they, would they allow us to set up a table out there? Because they're having that, uh, frequently like at least twice a month right uh, we were out there with uh fair maps yeah last year we had a we had a booth we had a table out there where people could vote for beers or ales that would yeah. be you know i think they, they would think that was fun that's a great idea Yeah, absolutely. I think that's worth writing down as well and seeing um, just setting up a bar where you think and just setting up a booth there or like having a dedicated final five event there would be good for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wasn't doing any planning. I was just saying that yeah, was a location. Just saying, yeah, I, yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing. It would also require, Nancy would also require drinking five beers, which to taste test. <laughs> which might be a bit of a problem. I don't know, Barb, people vote all the time and they don't really know what they're well, voting. That's one of my problems with voting. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we could have shot glasses out and that'll be oh, that'll okay. be enough to, we, we did that at Bob's last year where 
we didn't have to drink five bottles or anything like that. That would be bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, we're actually having a, I'll talk a little bit about an event later. Um, that'll be at the Liney Lodge in Chippewa Falls. That's similar to that. So yeah. Um, and then Linda, do you want to take me to our postcards? Oh yeah, there we are. Um, so this next thing that I alluded to a little bit ago um, is a form of legislative action that we're taking, which is just contacting legislators uh, via postcards. Some of you have um, maybe done this already by being at one of our house parties in the last month or so. Um, prior to the last month, we hadn't started rolling these out, uh, but now we are. But we also recognize that uh, we have hundreds of people who have already been to a house party um, or already know of us who um, haven't been able to fill one out yet. So we have an online form that we're going to um, spend some time um, giving you just a few minutes today to fill it out. Um, and the goal is to get um, 100 postcards um, to each um, state assemblyman and state senator in our area. So. Um, yeah, like it is basically on track to, um, we plan on delivering them in Q4 or Q1 um, and basically just handing them a stack of postcards. So the good thing about this online form is that if you fill out the online form, um, we will fill out the physical postcard for you um, with your wording on there and information on there if you um, consent to us doing that. And then it'll make it a lot easier for us to um, deliver them all at once. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the idea right now. Um, any questions about that process? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this link in um, to our chat here. I have the right link. And this is to our online postcard form. Um, and if you want to take just a couple minutes, um, if you would like to fill it out. Um, and if you do that, then we will send that postcard for you um, to your state assemblyman and state senator. Um, and if you've done it already, I know Barb, for example, has done it already. Um, your physical postcard is already filled out, so feel no need to do it. Um, but for the time being, I think I'm just gonna give everyone two minutes or so um, to fill it out while we're here. Um, this will also be sent out after the fact as well, um, but I'll give you just a couple minutes to do it here too. And is that link working okay for everyone? Not for Nancy? Not for Elise. Oh, let me see if I, there might be a setting that I have to change in here. And if so, I'll just make sure it gets sent out in our um, follow-up email as well. Does it say that you don't have access to it or something like that? Um, I just, yeah. I have a gray box. That's it. Oh, gray box. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Have you tried reloading it, Nancy? can't get to anything. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what would be the cause of that. I would say if I you want to send the link in a follow-up email, I promise yeah. to do it. Yeah, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, that's a better idea, yeah. Yeah, we'll just send it in our follow-up email and then um, hopefully it works for you then. I'm not sure what would be the cause mm -hmm. of that. But um, yeah, that'd be absolutely okay. great then. Um, so yeah, as a few of those, uh, a few of you are finishing those up, 
um, we can move on to our next slide, um, which is just to talk about this upcoming event we have on June 12th um, that is being hosted by Veterans for Political Innovation. Um, and it will be at the Liney Lodge in Chippewa Falls from 4.30 to 6.30. And the exciting part is that the two co-authors of the bill in the state Senate will be there. So Jeff Smith on the Democratic side and Jesse James on the Republican side are the two co-authors of this bill. Um, they will both be there and we will be uh, voting on beers um, just as was um, sort of suggested a few minutes ago. Um, so we, I think VPI said last they heard there are about 35 RSVPs um, and it's gonna be open doors, anyone's allowed to come. Um, the Liney Lodge is very big, so you don't have to RSVP beforehand. Although if you want to participate in the primary election, um, you would have to RSVP. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering, is anyone here? I know Anne, Linda, um, Grace, um, we're all planning on going. Is anyone here interested in going to that as well? And we've got a few people in that Eau Claire area since it's nice and close to them. Um, since yeah, it is a little bit of a drive for us here from um, River Falls, Hudson area where most of us are um, situated. But um, Barb, were you about to ask something? No. Okay, no, all right. Um, yeah, but that should be a good event. And in a way it'll be a bit of a um, coming out party for um, support for final five voting. Um, Jesse James, this will be his first public showing of support for that um, bill. Um, so we're looking forward to it and we'll be sure to report back on how it goes. So now I think um, we'll be wrapping up our meeting, but I'm wondering, are there any other questions that come to mind about anything that we've been discussing today um, for anyone? Okay, so Here. this is Elise, and yep. I, I actually was talking with somebody about this post, the Zoom meeting tonight. I don't even know what final five voting is. I just know I don't mm. like what we have now. <laughs> could you yeah. give it to me? I, could you give me that elevator speech? Absolutely. So um, actually, I'll, I'll ask Linda, do you want to go back to um, the slide on actually, uh, if you don't have it up, it's okay. Um, but yeah, if you can bring it back up and go back to the slide on the benefits of final five voting. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might have heard me talk about these benefits a little bit, and I'll get into exactly how it um, accomplishes these benefits for you. But final five voting, um, as we see it, accomplishes these benefits. So it reduces toxic campaigns, gridlock, and the power of extremists. It eliminates the spoiler effect, and it makes the November general election more important than our August primary. So the various problems that we see right now are that um, a very small amount of the population um, has too big of an impact on our elections, um, that our campaigns are too toxic and too negative, um, and that small parties have no um, chance of getting any sort of leeway in our current election system, um, or headway, I mean, in our current election system. Um, so how we want to fix this is by introducing Final Five voting, which we've obviously been um, talking about a little bit tonight. And what Final Five voting is, is the combination of a nonpartisan um, top five primary where um, you vote for one candidate and um, that primary election could have every different party all on one ballot. So Republicans, Democrats, independents, third parties, um, they'll all be running together in one primary election. And then from that primary, the top five advance and in the general election, you rank them um, in what's often referred to as a ranked choice election. So um, your favorite candidate, you would give your first choice, second favorite, you would give your second choice and so on. Um, so what that means is candidates can't succeed um, as easily just by um, spewing hatred like they do now. For example, if I'm running against Anne um, in our current system, 
I'm incentivized to uh, make sure that nobody votes for Ann. And you know, sometimes I may even be incentivized to spread lies about Ann. Um, whereas in final five voting, I have to be thinking about what what are Ann's voters, who are Ann's voters going to put as their second choice. Um, and then this also eliminates the spoiler effect because you can um, put a small party candidate as your first choice and then a large party candidate, Democrat, Democrat or Republican as your second choice. Um, and then, yeah, it reduces um, gridlock because it allows for um, candidates um, to have a more incentive to work across the aisle um, because they don't have to worry about being voted out in that party primary that we see today. Um, so, so I understand when you say, so um, it, as primaries exist now where you have to choose which party you want to, you, you only get to vote off one party's ballot. You don't get to cross ballot or cross party vote in a primary. Mm -hmm. You're saying primaries are open you can you vote for any of the candidates running for a position then when it comes to the general election there is this ranking system and is there any i'm and i'm thinking about turkey right now do you need to do you need to hit uh does the winning candidate need to hit a certain percentage in order to win yes the winning candidate needs to get a majority of the vote in order to win um so what that means is that if nobody are, are you familiar with um ranked choice voting not I'm not as well as I should be. How's that? I know yeah, the concept no a little bit, but um, not. No, I'm I'm going to say no for the purposes of better edification. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, so the um, gist of it is that if nobody gets um, a majority of the vote in the first round of tabulation, then the lowest ranking candidate gets eliminated. Um, so let's say you're ranking Starburst. Uh, which we often do at um, community events. And um, orange ends up in last place. So orange gets eliminated. And if you voted for orange as your first choice, your ballot would then go to your second choice. So maybe you put strawberry as your second choice, then your ballot would go to strawberry. Um, and that process continues until you hit a majority of the vote. Okay. And so it is. it still is a single general election. It's just how votes uh, shake out as as you eliminate candidates who are not who are the lowest so you basically have five rounds before you or four rounds before you get to those last two people and whoever gets more than 50 percent of that vote is who wins true yes okay Absolutely. thank you that I, I would like to be able to explain that to people <laughs> yeah and you know we can um definitely have a follow-up conversation too and um, see if you're interested in coming to one of our house parties that sort of um, yeah. bring you through the, the whole process. The the Zoom um, training that you mentioned, I would be interested in participating in that just to learn more. Great. Yeah, that would be absolutely a great uh, thing for you to do. And um, yeah, like, thank you for asking that since um, sometimes we, or sometimes I, I should say, forget that um, we could have first time attendees. So uh, it's good to be able to Go through that with you. Any other um, questions come to mind for people? All right, so what I am going to do then is I'm going to share a couple more links. Um, and these links will allow you to um, sign up for either the, um, let me see here, either the Chippewa Falls event I was talking about just a minute ago uh, at the Liney Lodge. So that'll take you to the VPI website for that. And then that follow-up forum from us um, will allow you to sign up for things like that training we were just talking about. Uh, if you wanna come to a community event with us like the Hudson Pride event or River Falls Days, um, it'll allow you to schedule time to talk to an organizer if you'd like. Um, so it gives you a few options there um, if you'd be interested in um, taking on some action after this meeting today. So 
So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, it is eight o'clock, so I will let you go. But um, if anyone has any remaining questions, feel free to stay on and ask me or um, reach me via email. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.